Hello guys, so this is going to be another instrument review video and today we're going to take a look at two Yamaha Euphonium models, Yamaha YEP642 and Yamaha Neo. I'm going to share my opinion on tone quality and production, accuracy, intonation, valves, design and price based on my testing experience at the US Army Band Tuba Euphonium Conference in Washington DC. So stay with me if you want to hear my review on Yamaha Euphonium. I want to address something real quick before we start. None of these review videos I make are sponsored by any of the companies that I feature in these videos. Not Adams, not Yamaha, not Sterling, and not any other company. This is just my opinion based on what I've tried and hopefully it will help you to form your own opinion, which again, does not necessarily have to agree with everything that I say. I play Sterling Euphonium and that's my instrument of choice. That doesn't mean I don't think there are other great euphoniums on the market worth mentioning. The goal is to help you make an educated decision when it comes to finding an instrument suiting your needs. It's pretty significant investment for most of you out there, so hopefully this video will help you to at least narrow down the search in terms of what you're looking for and what you can afford. So with that in mind, let's move on to the first instrument of the day. I'm going to start off by talking a little bit about Yamaha Neo. In my previous video I've mentioned that I was really impressed by two different euphonium models at the expo and Neo was certainly one of them. I first came into this particular mall in 2014 at the iTech Expo in Bloomington, Indiana. This was back when the mall was just coming out and was still in the workings and I remember being uh, really impressed by certain features of the instrument but didn't invest too much time into testing since uh, I was in a rush or um, something of that sort as far as I can remember. Well anyways, I had the chance to investigate um, a Yamaha Neo a little bit more into detail this time and uh, one thing I have to say is that Yamaha Neo is the real deal. So without any further ado, let's talk some Yamaha Neo. The very first thing we as players notice and look for when we play an instrument is obviously the sound. Depending on what instrument or type of music you play, your personal definition of good sound might vary. When I break down what is a great euphonium sound in my vocabulary, I always think about two aspects, tone and projection. I like my sound being dark, open, not too brassy for most part, and big enough to spread across even the largest halls. That usually depends on your personal skill set, obviously, but the correct instrument choice will definitely contribute a lot to it. Now, I could not comment on how well Yamaha Neo would fill a massive theater, but it definitely had a fantastic tone that I would describe as a beautiful, rich, and very pure euphonium sound. I tried playing the instrument pretty loud and it seemed that it wasn't sensitive to brightening up at all. So I would assume would probably do a pretty good job in band environment and larger halls. However, that is something that you only figure out once you play the instrument in that type of surroundings for a while. That being said, I love the tone quality and projection that Yamaha Neo produced, so a huge thumbs up here. Let's move on to the accuracy. I was extremely impressed with the accuracy of the instrument, especially when it came to the high register. Neo, alongside Eastman Euphonium, which I will discuss in a later video, had a hands down the craziest centering in the upper notes I've tried on any euphonium, period. The pitch was sinking so well up in the high notes that it almost felt like I was playing in the middle register. Generally the accuracy was really good, response time was pretty uh, instantaneous, love these on high notes, can't give anything else but a thumbs up here. Moving on to the intonation, it was pretty good but it definitely had a couple of sharp notes such as concert E flat, E and F above the staff and E flat and uh, E below the staff. 
It is the same issue that most of the brass band targeted euphonium such as Sterling, Besson, etc. have. And I'm used to using a trigger so that is nothing that would discourage me personally. But the problem was that I didn't really see a trigger on Yamaha Neo. I'm not sure whether they make the small with the trigger, but if they don't, you might consider adding one yourself if you were to get this particular model. Again, pitch on brass instruments depends a lot on your personal playing. If I wanted to, I could pretty much bend down the whole scale without changing my valve, so sometimes it might be uh, my tired lips that cause the tuning problems. However, this was uh, one of the first models I've tried at the Expo, so I'm pretty sure um, that it kind of had a couple of sharp notes because I was still fresh. So nothing that would freak me out, but uh, it's just something you might want to be aware of. Next on the list are valves. I didn't notice any issues there, so usually what I look for is smooth motion and quiet performance, so it seemed perfectly fine to me. Valve tops were comfortable, valves moved nice, fast and quick, so definitely let's give a thumbs up and move on. Next on the list is design. A Neo seemed to be built very well and comfortable to hold. The angle of the lead pipe allowed me to keep the instrument really up close to my body, what felt really nice on my shoulders, and it didn't seem to be all that heavy at all as well, so it generally looked pleasing to the eyes, so I definitely enjoyed the design of Yamaha Neo, and I'm giving my thumbs up here as well. Last but not the least was the price. Now, the Dylan Music Booth had Yamaha Neo for $5,745, US dollars, which in my opinion is an excellent price for a professional line euphonium. From all the professional euphonium models I would recommend to people, Yamaha Neo was one of, if not the cheapest euphonium out there. So a huge thumbs up to Yamaha for not overpricing this model. To sum it all up, I was extremely impressed by Yamaha Neo from the short test amount and time I've had. Obviously, I'm positive I could get a better clue of uh, all pros and cons of this particular model if I was to play it a little bit more extensively uh, for a longer period of time, but I feel that Yamaha made a huge progress by making Neo a very complete and well-rounded instrument to play on. I would definitely put Neo as my top five favorite euphoniums on the market at the moment. With that in mind, let's move on to the Yamaha YEP642. So Yamaha YEP642 was the very first euphonium I've tried at the Expo, and even though it is an extremely popular model amongst euphonium players, especially in the USA, I wasn't all that impressed by it when I was summing it up as a complete package. There were some nice qualities about this model, but some things I didn't particularly like all that much based on my taste, so let's talk a little bit more in depth about it. Yamaha YEP642 was the very first euphonium I've tried at the Expo. And as soon as I started making some noise, I've noticed that the sound was pretty shallow, almost like those all non-compensating euphoniums. And at first I thought it might be uh, just me since I, it was early morning and uh, I haven't had much sleep or time to warm up. There were a lot of people playing around, so I figured I might just, you know, not getting the most accurate representation of the sound considering the circumstances. However, as soon as I put the mouthpiece into my own instrument, it instantly struck me that Yamaha YEP642 did indeed have a smallish, more shallow sound. <laughs> And I'm not talking about the brightness in particular, like um, Adam C1, for example, where you could feel that the instrument was designed to sound bright. It generally felt very stuffy tone to me on YEP642. And I understand there were people playing around, but in terms of projecting, I could hear myself perfectly well. So it's not the projection, it was just a very awkward feeling, uh, as if I was playing a baritone horn rather than euphonium. And it might have been just that particular model, maybe there was something wrong with the instrument on the shelf, but uh, it just didn't feel right to me considering it's a professional compensating euphonium model. Moving on to the accuracy, and the accuracy was actually pretty good. 
It had a little resistance, making it pretty easy and comfortable to play on. The response time was really good as well. The pitching seemed to be pretty consistent throughout all the ranges and the high register seemed to be pretty centered as well. Overall, for sure, a thumbs up when it comes to YEP 6 for 2 accuracy and centering. Next on the line, tuning. I thought the tuning was pretty good within itself with the exception of low E flat and E below the staff. I could see it matching the intonation well with piano and being a pretty easy instrument to tune if you're playing a solo, but as I mentioned before, no trigger in band playing for me is like... Overall, a thumbs up or intonation. Time to discuss the valves. By the time I'm filming this video, I honestly cannot even remember all that well. I just know that I put a NP in my notebook, which pretty means uh, pretty much means it works smooth, quiet, and nothing really caught my attention too much. So next aspect I took into consideration was the design. And again, felt pretty comfortable to hold, wasn't too heavy, and the fourth valve was well in reach. Nothing too crazy about visual appearance, but generally YEP642 looks pleasing to the eyes, so thumbs up and let's talk money. The price for Yamaha YEP642 at Dylan Music Booth stood for $4,295. Even though it's quite a bit cheaper than Yamaha NEO, I honestly believe you could find a more well-rounded Euphonia Moss for closer to like $3,000. I know that it might just be me having bad luck with that particular uh, instrument on the shelf and that the general quality of Yamaha's um, and the reputation is that they're pretty consistent with it. But uh, this was the Euphonia on the display, so can't blame me for giving my opinion. Overall, it's not much of a secret that Yamaha is one of the largest brass instrument companies with long history of successful euphonium and other instrument models. I absolutely loved the Yamaha Neo and it was my pick for top 2 most impressive professional euphoniums at the DC Expo. It played really well and the price was very reasonable. Obviously YEP642 did not impress me all that much. But it's just my impression guys, it doesn't mean that you'll have the same experience. I just hope that these videos will help to narrow down the list of choices for people who don't necessarily have a chance to test every single model uh, of euphoniums on the market. As always, thanks for watching peeps. Make sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel for more upcoming videos. If you liked the video, give it a thumbs up, uh, share with it with your friends, let me know what you think by leaving a comment down below or on any of my other social media platforms such as Facebook or Twitter. Don't forget to take benefit from the 10% discount that dfmusicinc.com is offering to my viewers by using the promo code MATONIS. And for now, I wish you all the best. Stay safe, work hard, and keep motivated, my friends. Till the next time.